Allison Pukshavinsky with New Seed. I'm here in a sunflower field in Nebraska. Um, we consider Western Nebraska part of the High Plains region of, uh, of sunflowers. So that being Nebraska, Colorado, and Kansas. This area um, this year has been hit particularly hard with the sunflower head moth. So I want to show some examples on what you can look for in your field. Here is a sunflower head and there is kind of this white silk type webbing that gets left on the head. Um, so one thing that I like to do is I like to go ahead, brush these florets off. They should come off uh, really easily this time of year. And depending upon the stage of the larvae, sometimes you can find um, the larvae crawling around. Sometimes you cannot. Um, the larvae do go through several, um, or I think at least three instars. So they start off really tiny and then they get bigger. Uh, when they are initially uh, in a field, they kind of stay on the tops of the sunflower head, um, feed off um, uh, some of the pollen and such. But then as they get bigger, they will uh, bury themselves into the akin of the sunflower seed and it will actually bury itself into the sunflower seed. Um, go ahead, it'll eat the meat, and then it will exit out the top part. Um, so not, not the pointy end, the top part of the sunflower head, and it will leave an exit hole. So uh, not only are you reducing your test weight, you're reducing your oil quality and your yield as, uh, as well. For Another telltale sign. So if you can't find the larvae, um, the, the, the sunflower head moth larvae uh, do look pretty different than banded sunflower moth and also seed, seed weevil larvae. Um, they have a very distinct kind of brownish head, but also a striped body. So that's how you can really tell it apart from the other two. And really their, their feeding is, is quite messy. So you'll often see, um, I kind of tore open this sunflower head here uh, you'll see kind of some some frass and some some signs that uh, that that larvae was uh, was feeding before it buried itself into um, um, into the akin of the sunflower seed. Here's kind of another example of uh, how messy they can get. So you kind of see a little bit of frass there and a bunch of um, uh, feeding right here. So this is damage in addition to uh, before they bury themselves in the, um, in the actual seed themselves. So what's the importance going out this time of year? A uh, couple things. Number one, you can look and see what your seed set was in, in your field, kind of maybe what your yield potential is like. Uh, so this particular sunflower head filled all the way to the center. So the sunflower head will start pollinating from the outside and then it will go inside. Usually if there's um, some sort of stress, drought stress, um, nutrients, uh, it, it won't fill to the center. So this one did, that's, uh, that's fantastic um, for, for this field. And, um, and then you're also able to look and see if you did have an insect problem. Now, if you are finding uh, larvae evidence, so either seed weevil, um, in this particular field, sunflower head moth, or even the banded sunflower moth. There's nothing that you can do about it at this staging, um, but you're able to tell uh, if you did spray an insecticide, did I spray at the right timing? Should I have sprayed twice? Um, you know, come harvest, if maybe your quality is a little bit lower than you were expecting, might give you a little bit of insight as to perhaps why. Um, and also you can, you can plan for, for next year for next year's sunflower crop um, and you can plan ahead so maybe you don't have some of the same issues.